Hi, this is Dave Myers with Paper Trail Financial. This is part two of how to view pro forma changes to your balance sheet. In this video, I'll demonstrate how to create a simple fixed rate loan calculator and tie it to the balance sheet adjustments. This is the worksheet that we created in part one. On the left, we have the existing balance sheet, which was generated by QuickBooks. We have an adjustment column. Uh, in this case, we're using it for a loan. On the right is the pro forma column, which shows the balance sheet after our adjustments. Also on the top right are the ratios, which show our business's liquidity and leverage both before and after the adjustments. One of the things I've added here is the industry data for comparison. The industry data provides three numbers which help divide the ratios into quartiles. Uh, with our business here, with the proposed loan, liquidity remains in the top quartile and leverage increases but remains in the upper middle quartile. I'll create a fixed rate loan calculator real quickly. We'll put the inputs in here. First is purchase amount and the down payment. The amount we're going to finance is a product of those. The interest rate, the number of payments, and from that we can calculate our payment amount and our total payments and the total interest expense. I'll highlight these in Control-1 and I'll give them a fill and I'll change the font to white and make them bold. I'll also number format uh, our inputs here. Make sure we have a comma separator and make them bold as well. So for this example I'll just use the adjustment column that we already have, the loan we have in there. So for purchase amount we'll put in the asset value which is 150000 The down payment we already have in there is 20000 The amount finance is going to be the difference between the two, so purchase amount minus the down payment. For interest rate um, I'll just make one up, 6%. 0.06 and I'll change that to a percentage. Number of payments, let's assume five years monthly, so it'll be five times 12. Our payment amount, we're just going to insert the payment function, which is PMT and then tab. I'll hit the function key and bring up the dialog. Our interest rate is 6% per year, not per payment, so we're going to put in our 6% cell divided by 12. Our N per is the number of payments which is 60 we have right here. Our present value is the amount finance which is $130,000 here. And Excel returns a negative number so we want to put a minus in front of it to fix that. Our total payments are going to be the number of payments multiplied by our payment amount which we just calculated and the interest expense is going to be our total payments minus the original amount financed. So now we can see not only the results of the loan on our balance sheet, where liquidity is still very strong when compared to the industry, but leverage is now slightly higher, but also that there's going to be an additional $2,513 monthly expense uh, due to this loan. To try and integrate all this, I'm going to link the input cells to the adjustments. So first I'll highlight the input cells, and I'll change the color. We'll give them the input color. And then I want to make the down payment adjustment here I'll make it equal to a negative to make it a negative number and our down payment and then our fixed assets going to be equal to our purchase price. With everything linked together we can change our inputs now and have the adjustments update automatically. So for purchase amount I'll change it to $350,000 increase the down payment to $25,000 increase the interest rate to 6.5% and instead of five years, we'll change it to seven years of payments. The new changes to the loan parameters result in an increased payment of $4,826. Liquidity slightly declines to 5.23 to 1, but is still in the top quartile for the industry. Uh, leverage further increases to 3.47 to 1, but still is in the upper middle quartile for the industry. If we want to look at multiple loan scenarios at once, we can use Excel to create a data table, which will show the monthly payment amounts for various interest rates and loan amounts. 
I'll shrink down this column here to make some room and first I'll put in the interest rates and we'll start at 3.5 percent and go up by 0.5 to 4.0 I can highlight both of them and drag it down and we'll go down to 11 percent now I'll put in our loan amounts we'll start at 25,000 and we'll go up by 25 so 50,000 highlight both of them and I'll drag it to the right to fill it in in $25,000 increments to $300,000. In the top left corner, I'm going to put in the cell that we're going to solve for, in this case the payment amount. So I'll say equal to and click on payment amount in the table. And then I'll highlight the entire range. And I'll go up to data on the ribbon, the what if analysis, and data table. In the dialog here, we have two inputs. Uh, first is the row input, which is our loan amount. So we're just going to choose purchase amount for that. For our column input, it's the interest rate. So I'll just click on the interest rate cell and OK. And I'll highlight our results. And I'll choose a number format of comma separated with no zeros. And I'll highlight the row and column headers using the control key. And I'll use cell styles and I'll make them a darker color and make them bold. And you can see our results match. In the loan calculator on the left, we have a payment of $21.84 when it's rounded. And in the data table, 8% at $200,000, also 2184 So what we've created is a way to view the effects of a new loan on our small business. We started with a balance sheet generated by QuickBooks. Uh, we have a loan calculator that adjusts the pro forma balance sheet, showing both the before and after. We have balance sheet liquidity and leverage ratios uh, with industry data and a data table tied to a loan calculator showing multiple payment options at a glance.